This is not zero, right? That's not zero. We need this to be zero to say that x plus four times something would be this original thing, right? So this would be one of the guesses that we tried that wouldn't work. And what we're hoping for is we're hoping for a remainder of zero out here. Do y'all follow? Okay, now why do we write a remainder like this? That's, that's gonna go back to, to some stuff from grade school. Let's, uh, let's do uh, 12 divided by five. When we did this division, we said what, two, 10, two, five doesn't go into uh, two, so we said remainder two. And then someone else at some point said, no, that's too childish, write two and two fifths. Remember that? Two and two fifths, so you take your, your two answer here, and then your remainder over your five. And we call this, right here, we call this a uh, mixed number. You remember that, mixed number? It's called a mixed number. And you actually should begin to hate, nah, hate's a strong word. You should just purge these completely from your system. Mixed numbers are not used in pre-cal and calculus. Hate's a strong word, purge is a word. Yeah, it still gets the point though, right? Get them out of your mind. Here's the reason why. A lot of people don't know what two and two fifths even means. It means two plus two fifths. That's what it means. That's what two plus two fifths means. Now, this is called a mixed number. You might have heard something called an improper fraction where you take the two, multiply by five, get 10, add two, that's what? No? Remember it's two and two fifths. How to convert that over? Multiply here, 10, add two, you get 12. 12 over five. So that's, this, these two fractions are equivalent? Yes. Okay, well, they are, yes. But I'm telling you that this means this. On this one right here, give me a common denominator. What would a common denominator be here? Five, so I multiply top and bottom here by five, and you get uh, what, 10 over five plus two over five, which is 12 over five, which is this, right? So the reason why we purge these from our mind is because a lot, well, like I said, a lot of people don't even know what it means. It just means this number plus this number. So not, why not just write it? Just write two plus two fifths. Why write, why write two and two fifths? Or do you mean two times? Oh. You see, it's confusing sometimes. Do you mean two times two fifths? Do you mean two and two fifths? Eh, just get rid of them. Just write 12 fifths. You know, kind of, this is too childish. We just get rid of it. So if, if our remainder in the last problem was negative seven, remember it was down here? Yeah. I said just put plus the remainder over the divisor. Yeah. That's exactly what this is. It's the answer plus the remainder over, over the divisor. And we need to make sure we put that on the side so that we can multiply. That's right. Okay, uh, it's 204. I do have to give you one more example let's do let's do C so what I'm about to tell you right here this is probably the most important thing I'm going to tell you all semester <laughs> he wasn't even paying attention I love messing with people I had a girl come into the Cal 2 class today late she came in about 20 minutes late you know kind of snuck in I, as soon as she sat down I was like all right that's it for today let's go and she's just like, what? I was kidding, of course. All right. At least you tape your lectures. I know. That's, I don't think it has the same effect anymore because I tape them. You know? Tape them. Look at I, you, I, tape. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Who says that still? Tape. I still think it's hilarious that on a computer when you want to save a file, yeah. it has the little floppy disk up there in the yeah. corner. Like half the population has no idea what the heck I that is. A little, like, a little, Those things were awesome. internet one says like, this generation will never know what this is supposed to be. Pitch please, that's a save button. <laughs> <laughs> the save button, yep. All right, can we continue? I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here, yeah, yeah, trying to keep it grounded here. here. Let's do a uh, long division on this. I wonder if this x cubed minus eight does break down, and I wonder if x minus two is one of its factors. 
If we do long division, if we do long division and get a remainder of zero, then that will, we will confirm that this does break down, right? As with x minus two to be a factor. But let's just do division. So here's the slight difference in the way you do this. You want the numerator in descending order, right? Notice you're missing. There's like no x squareds, right? We need to create placeholders for the x squared. In other words, we're placing um, some zeros in here so that we allow ourselves some room for some columns of, of things that may appear. If you do not put space in here, you're going to wind up with a big mess of, of things that are crossed over and you won't know what's what. So trust me, identify anything that's missing, put some space holders there. Everyone agree that's the same expression? Okay, now on the outside, we've got uh, x minus 2. What do you multiply x by to get x cubed? Do you want to try this your own? You want to try this one on your own? Yeah? OK, go ahead. You see if you do. You do what? I didn't do that. All I can tell you is be careful. Because, you know, if on a test you start getting things mixed up and, you know, I was the, I think I was the same way you were. I didn't want to put the space in there. I just, I just was anti-space in my long division. And at some point it, it caught up to me. And I finally said, you know what? I've got to put the space in there. Because this is a pretty simple long division. But, I mean, if you have a, if you have a long division that's really long, like a huge polynomial here and a huge polynomial here. Imagine like an eighth degree polynomial here and a sixth degree polynomial here. Not in this class, but later. You just want to have a nice, clean, organized way of doing it. Got it? You got it? Long division didn't, you seem pretty excited about it over there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start filling this out. <clears throat> Get a remainder of zero? Everyone get a remainder of zero? That's good news. The answer to this division problem is just x squared plus 2x plus 4. But the, the more profound idea here is that we just, we just determined that x cubed minus 8 could be rewritten as what? Uh, x, minus x minus 2 times. That's right. And that's exactly what you would get had you noticed that this was a um, difference of cubes and went to the difference of cubes formula that you learned at some other point in time and plugged in all the information and this is what you would have gotten. Do you, how many of you remember there's a difference of cubes formula and a sum of cubes formula? Yeah? Yeah? I don't remember this. You don't remember that, but do you remember that there is a formula? Yes? Okay. I'm not asking you to have memorized. But there's something I want to point out about it. On, well, I'll just write it down. x cubed plus y cubed equals x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. That's the formula for the sum of cubes. The formula for a difference of cubes is that. So they're very, very similar, these formulas. What, what I want to point out to you is that this right here and this right here 
are quadratics, aren't they? Like right here, look at this. This is a quadratic. In this formula for sum of cubes and difference of cubes, if we're going to get a quadratic here, can this factor? Could this quadratic factor? You would think yes, right? But if it did, why would they give you the formula like this and leave it as a quadratic? Why wouldn't they just factor it for you and give you a final formula that's completely factored, right? The reason is because this right here will never factor. This right here cannot be factored. We call that irreducible. There's just no way to factor it, unless you use imaginary numbers. But we're not allowed to, so OK? So at this point right now, let's say that this was a polynomial. We were trying to graph this, right? If we were trying to graph this right here, it would go down, it would go up. It would have x-intercepts. I would factor it. Here's what I've got. I'd set that to 0. I'd get 2. This one, I wouldn't even have to worry about. This is like the problem you asked me in the very beginning of class today. This right here would not have any solutions. Just keep that in mind if you run into that again with the difference of cubes or sum of cubes. What do we got? 211. Okay, for homework, what I'd like for you to do is A, D, E, and F. Remember, these notes are online in Canvas if you need to get them. And of course, you can take a picture of the board if you want. Hold on, I'll make them a little bigger. A, D, E, and F. The ones we didn't do. We didn't do A, we didn't do D, E, and F. Yep. We got it? I'm going to move on. So long division is an effective method to help factor polynomials. Have I convinced you of that? Like it does help us factor. The problem we run into is how to determine what to divide by. Right? How are we going to determine that? We will resolve this issue soon. And then Ariel was mentioning synthetic division. And here it is. Synthetic division is a shortcut of long division, but is only effective when your denominator is linear. All right? And therefore, if, if you go back and look at these notes, you cannot do E or F using synthetic division. So what I'm going to do is look at these problems again, same ones we just looked at. Which of those problems can I use synthetic division on? A, B, C, and D, right? So let's see how it works. I'm going to do B and C with synthetic division instead of long division, just so you can see the difference between the two. We know what the answers are, right? So we just did these. The denominator. The denominator. The bottom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to readdress Ariel's question, which was, you know, why not just do synthetic? First of all, because it, you can only do it when it's linear, but also because if I just walk in here and just start doing synthetic division out of nowhere, it just seem, it's kind of awkward if no one's ever seen like division, period, like long division. So. Um, Here's how, it's, here's how it works. We do a division box over here, but it's, it's upside down like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a row of numbers in here, but we're going to leave some space below. So the numbers I put in here are the coefficients of the numerator as long as it's in descending order. So what's the number in front of x squared? One. What's the number in front of x? Two. The number in front of, uh, well, there's, there's no other x's, so just minus 15. And above this, I'm just going to put a little reference for you. This was what represented x squared. This was our x's. This was just our number, right, which is a constant out here at the end. Notice I left some space below this. Show of hands, how many of you have seen this? OK, good. Um, and then on the outside of this box right here, I'm going to put a number. And that number is going to come from the bottom. 
and it, it will eh, it will be Ariel. What is it? I forgot. Negative four. Negative four. So it's the opposite of what you see here, right? It's the opposite of this number, and you put that out here. Okay. And then help me out because it's been like so long since I've done synthetic division. What am I supposed to do now? Put a zero under the one and add down straight like this. One plus zero is one and put it here. And then what? Multiply negative four times one and that's negative four. <laughs> what do I do with that? <coughs> put it underneath the two. So negative four. Bless you. Then add down again, negative 2. And then multiply again, negative 4, negative 2 is 8. Put that back up here. And then add down, negative 7. Now I put this little kind of boxy looking thing over here because this number is always your remainder. And was that the remainder we got earlier? Yes. Yes. So g look back in your notes from what we just did. What was the answer to this that I gave you just a second ago? when we did this? Uh, x minus 2 plus 7 over x plus 4. Right, that was it right there? Yeah. How are we going to get to that answer? Because that's the answer to this problem, right? From this information. Like, where is it? Well, Do you all see it? Actually, yeah. Um, so you're just going to bring up the x, because we didn't really divide by the x, I, I'm assuming. But I understand the 2 part, because you know, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Okay. Do, do you see that these three numbers actually are the numbers up here? Yeah. Right? Do you see the one here? Yeah. Do you see negative two and do you see the negative seven? All come from this table right here? This bottom row tells you what your answer is. So this right here tells you how many x's you have. Now the reason why it tells you how many x's is the number that's to the far left down here will always be whatever this power is less 1. Okay, so if this is x squared, this number right here means 1x to the first power. One less than what was up there. If this had been x cubed, then this would be 1x squared. If this was x to the eighth, this would be 1x to the 7th. Understand? Then as you move to the right, the powers just keep coming down. So now I have minus 2, then no x's, right? Plus a remainder of seven. negative 7, and then oh, you would just always do over your divisor. Your divisor comes from over there, x plus 4. See all that? Okay, no problems, no questions? Easy does it. Okay, now I'm going to show you something, again, with, with the idea of looking ahead. We are not interested in figuring out what this answer is necessarily. What we're interested in is if the answer gives us a remainder of zero, what this factor is to be, right? So I'm going to show you a slightly different way to interpret this table which I will continue to use as we move on the next few days. So we got our answer from there, we're happy. Remember that we said, oh, well, you know what? This one doesn't have a remainder of zero, does it? Right? No. So there's no sense in me going on. Let's, uh, let's move to the next one. So the next one, I'll, I'll illustrate what I was trying to say. x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2. So I'll go a lot faster through this one. Can I use synthetic division? Yes. yes. I'm going to do my upside down thing. What numbers go in here? Uh, one, one, zero, 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 and negative eight. Zero, zero, negative eight. See, here you can't get around the zeros. You have to use them. If you just do one negative eight, it's over. Okay. So you have to account for the spaces in this. And then out here, two and then zero, and then you start playing your game, right? Come down one, two, two, and then four, four, eight, remainder zero. So you, get, you start to get quick with this. 
It's a remainder of zero, right? That's a good thing. So the answer to this, right, this should equal these numbers. This is 1x to what power? X squared. x squared and then plus 2x and then plus 4. So x squared plus 2x plus 4, which is what we got earlier with long division, right? Okay, now let me show you the slightly different angle on this. I had shown you just a second ago after we did that problem with long division that we could interpret from that that it in fact factored to be this, right? That the result of what we did with long division meant that x cubed minus 8 factors this way, right? I'm going to show you that off this table now. We already know that these three numbers means x squared plus 2x plus 4. We know that, right? That's what this means. This number right here came from this factor, didn't it? So if I look at the factor instead, which is this change the sign, then do you see that if, if I take the 2, change the sign, put it in there with an x, put these numbers in like this, this is the factored form? That's the way we're going to look at it, all right? We're going we're to look at a synthetic division table, hope for this, if that works, this number comes down, gives us a factor. These numbers come down, give us the other piece. OK? All right. Um, I'm, I'm going to cut out a little early, but I want to do one more problem. I want to do the problem that we started with that we couldn't get. OK? Was it down there? Uh, no, those are a bunch of ones. So we're not, we're still not ready. Oh, the first problem? Yeah, the very first one we did that I started with. This one right there. Okay, so where, where we were stuck was we were trying to factor x cubed plus 8x squared plus x minus 42, right? Let's try and factor this. I mean, we had it equal to zero, but let's just try and break it down, see if we can split it up. Now, we know, we know what it factors to be, right? Here it is. I did it for you. I proved it to you. Right? What's that? So what, what, would I, what would I potentially divide this by? Let's cheat. What, what do I know would work? X minus 2 or X plus 3 or X plus 7, right? Yeah? I'm going to tell you in just a second how you're going to know where those come from, okay? But let's just practice with this. Let's do the synthetic division. What am I going to put in here? 1, 8, 1, and negative 42, right? What factor did you say would work? Let's go with the first one. x minus 2, right? x minus 2 we know works. So what number do we know should work? 2, not minus 2, right? It's the opposite. So if I put 2 here, I should get a remainder of 0, shouldn't I? Let's see. Bring it down. 2 times 1 is 2. Down, you get 10, 20, 21, 42, and voila, 0. That's good, right? So now let's interpret this table the way I said I wanted you to interpret it. This tells us x minus 2 is a factor. And this tells us what? The rest is squared plus 10x plus 21. Now look at this quadratic. Can you factor that? Yes. That you can ha handle, I hope. X what, plus 7 plus 3? And now we've completely factored it. See that? It was just getting us over that initial hump of that first one, right? Once we broke through that first one, the rest we could get. And that's what we're going to do with these. We're going to try these problems that get harder and harder. And you just try and get it down to a place where you can finally take over and stop with the synthetic division. Now, what would have happened if you had accidentally messed this up and used a negative 2 here instead? Negative 6 
negative 12, negative 11, 22, not going to work. You're not going to get a remainder of 0, and that means that x plus 2 is not a factor, and, and that means you need to try something else. So the, the question now is, and I can answer it in five minutes, where does the list of potential numbers come from, right? It's the first and the last number, right? It has to do with the first number, which is called the leading coefficient, right? And the last number, which is the constant. Those two numbers are where you'll actually come up with your potential numbers from here. And it's called the rational zero test. And that's where I'll start next class, but I'll just show you how it works. What you do is you take 42, and you don't care about, you don't have to worry about the fact that it's negative. Write down the number 42, and then what you do is you list out all of the possible ways that you could multiply two numbers together to get 42. So like for example, 1 in, one in 42? 1 in 42 would work, right? I'm put 42 way out here on the list. 1 times 42 would give you 42. How about negative 1 and negative 42? So not only could I have 1, I could have plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 42. So that already, we have four numbers, right? Right there? Now, what's another way I could get 42? How about uh, 2 and 21? And I could do negative 2 and negative 21, so I'm going to do plus or minus on both those. So now we've added an additional four numbers, and we're up to 8. And then I keep going. 3, does 3 go into 42? 3 and 14? 14. And both positive and negative. How about 4? Does 4 go into 42? 5? 6? How many times? 7? 6 and 7, right? And then now I've met in the middle. Do you see that? So I don't have to go check 7. I already know 7 and 6 works. I don't have to check 8 because it would have worked with something else over here. So that is list number one. I have to make another list of numbers, a second list. That second list comes off of this number, which in this case is just one. And the only way you can multiply two integers and get one is if you do one and one or negative one and negative one. So there's only two numbers on that list, which is good. So I have the first list comes from this number, second list comes from this number. Then you make a final list. Your final list is every one of these divided by every one of these. So that means I take positive or negative 1 divided by positive or negative 1, which would give me positive or negative 1. Positive or negative 2 divided by positive or negative 1 would give me positive or negative 2. And then I keep going. It's just going to be the original list, right? This one up here? Because this is a 1. Now, had this been like 1 and 3, then you would have also had you know, 1 over that, 2 over that, 3 over that. So you'd have the original list, but then you'd also have 1 over 3, 1 third. You would have 2 over 3, 2 thirds. So you get fractions in there too. So this list, right? This is my master list right here. So I need to go try those numbers in synthetic division. So what I would do is 1, 8, 1, negative 42, right? I'm trying to break this thing down. We cheated. We said, we said two worked, right? Right, two worked because we knew where it came from. So what I would do is I would try one first. It wouldn't work. Then I'd try negative one. It wouldn't work. Then I'd try two. Pff, it works. And as soon as it works, I'm good. What was your question? Sorry, by the degree. Pardon? The first degree, would you try, like, would you try getting three, three factors? Because you know you're going to get three x's. Would you try, like, I mean, how, how we got the seven, three, and are you saying keep doing this and get all three answers? Well, I mean, just try, just try uh, 20, like 21 times 2, or I mean, uh, 7 times 3 times 2. So you just use those, like x plus 7, x plus 3. I'm not sure I'm following you. Like, because uh, the degree is 3, and mm -hmm. it's, you're going to get 3x. Yes. So um, never mind. Anyway. You sure? Yeah. yeah. OK. There are some other um, tests that you can do that give you like a range of, of where to look in here. But um, th this, is, this is good enough. We have a list. This is better than an infinite number of guesses, right? And we actually get it on our third try. If we do one, negative one, then two, we get it. As soon as we got the two, we did the rest on our own. Yes? I thought 
think what he's asking is if you were to just continue testing like after you got it, could you just find all of the points like that? Is that what you were saying? Like get two to work and then after that go and get get uh, what no, negative thing? Because there's three factors that mm -hmm. go into it. And, mm -hmm. and just like just if you have twenty one, but I mean or you have you got the number seven and three. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you yeah, if you if you clear it up in your own mind and, and you can verbalize it, just let me know. So what's for homework tonight? Um, I'm asking you to do the the where is it? Yeah, do the long division on these, right? Now I do have one. A, B, D, and F. On one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, for F. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep, that's what'll happen. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else I want to do. Here. Yeah, you turn on your quiz, I'll do it off that. Yes. I was gonna ask when you were doing the long division for the F part, you have to put those in order as well, X to the third Yeah, always put those in order. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna stick um, for now we're gonna stick to your homework being focus mo mainly on what I'm doing in class. And the reason why is because, look at what this, this chapter is, or this section. I'm calling it chapter F, factoring polynomials. It's, there's not really a dedicated section in the book that approaches it this way. But what I do is I kind of blend a bunch of different ideas together into one like lecture. And so it's difficult for me to like point you to the book. So just focus on what I'm doing here. Do that. I know it's not a huge homework assignment. I'm sorry about that. but. You know, don't worry. You'll have plenty of practice. As soon as we, we get through we'll next class, you'll have plenty to do. Okay. Y'all have a good day. Let's see, did it make it? Wow, that lasted a long time. I was having a little bit of trying to remember how to do the long division. Yeah. Yes.